Now, a lot of times people do things and then they said, you know, but I didn't intend to do it. You know, sorry, I didn't intend to do that. You know, we have an accident. I'm sorry. You know, um, it's not my fault. And um, I didn't really expect it to come out this way. I know it was rude, but I didn't intend for it to be rude and all of that. So quite often we do that. Um, but the reality is the deed that we do have con consequences. They have impact. You know, you hit somebody's car, even though you didn't intend to do it, you were trying to change lanes. But the reality is that person's car is now mashed up. You know, so the impact of our actions don't go away because we had a good intention or we didn't really want it to do that. You know, so we've got to always recognize that even though I have good intention, I have to be very careful about my actions and understand that whatever action I do, there are consequences to it, to have impact. It does something to change something in the world, whether good or bad. And so we have got to be very careful about that. And so whenever we are approaching our situation, always take enough effort, not only to make the right intention, but to have a carefulness about the actions that we do as well. And so that's really an important thing. Now, you may make, start off doing an action with a good intention, and then midway of the action, you may change and decide that you want to make it a bad, you know, like you, you change your intention to do something bad. Uh, you begin, for example, saying, I'm going to help this sister uh, with some money or something like that. And then somebody, uh, came whilst you were trying to do that and said, that is a terrible system. And you said, okay, I'm not going to help her anymore. And you change it, you change your intention. And then later on, you say, you know what? It doesn't matter. I should still help her. And then you decide to continue helping her instead. So no matter how much time you change your intention between the action, what they look at, if you start with a good intention, they look at what you end with. The ending intention is what is going to count as the one that matters. On what intention did you end the action with? And the scholar said, no matter how many times you change in between, it is irrelevant. We look at the, the ending intention as the important one. And of course, if you start with a good intention and you end with a bad intention, you know, a particular action, then they're going to weigh that action based on what the intention that it ended with. What was your last intention for this action? And so um, it will be considered a bad uh, intention which you had. Now, what is encouraged and recommended, and that's what we have to become very skilled at, is to have where you do a single action, but you have multiple intentions of why you're doing it. This is really important. So for example, I may want to fast and I'm going to say, I'm going to fast to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm going to fast because the study circle says that we have to do one fast for the month. I'm going to fast because today happened to be Ashura and we're supposed to fast. So I'm going to use today to fast. So I have four, five, six, seven reasons for that fast. And the more I'm going to fast because it makes me humble and that is better for me. I'm going to fast because, you know, and you add as much intention to that fast then you get rewards for all of that. And so the idea is to have multiple intentions when you do any single action. I am praying the Salah. I pray the Salah because Allah commands me to pray the Salah. I am praying the Salah because it will bring me closer to Allah. I am praying the Salah because it will make me humble. I am praying the Salah. So as much intention you, you have, you develop that sense of having multiple intentions for your actions, for one action, then it will maximize your reward for, for that. Now, intentions are really the why. You know, I've been in many Islamic groups and quite often, and even in corporations, we make a terrible mistake in that we sit down and we think up of a project, you know, hey, we need to do X. And the first thing we do after we say what we need to do, we go into how, how do we do it? And rarely do we ask why. You know, you will see so often, I will see this happen. You know, we want to do this project. We want to be able to, you know, feed or let me give you other than feeding. <laughs> we want to be able to go into the, uh, the neighborhood and share out some flyers about Islam to the people. 
So once we find what, we jump to how. And we never ask why. Why do you want to do that? Is that the most effective way to give the Tao? The why would give you the purpose of why you're doing it, you know. Should we share a flyer or should we call them together and, and bring them to the message and talk to them together? The why would take you in a direction that is important. And when you answer the why, why do we do this? You will find always, you will have to adjust the what and the how because the why will bring the purpose, the exact purpose of why you're going to do something. And that is where the why comes in. So it's really important that we because we are result oriented, we only think in terms of accomplishing the end result. We, we, we end up asking why and how do I get there, you know, to be able to accomplish this thing. Whereas for the Muslim, we are focused on intention and we are focused on striving. In other words, on, on working towards getting to the, to the end. We're not so much focused on what happens at the end. We have a general idea what we want to see, but our attention and our focus is not so much worrying about the result. The result is in the hands of Allah. What we are focused on is my intention and my struggle to get to wherever I want to be. So we spend a lot of our time on doing that. So the intention allows us, if you train yourself to always uh, make the intention, you will always keep asking yourself why. And you should always do that. And you'll be shocked if you go into a group or your youth group or whatever group you have and they have an activity and you ask them, why are we doing this? You will be amazed at the reply again. Well, we always used to do this. Since the masjid formed, we used to have this particular program. That's why we're doing it. But the why will say, is it still relevant? Does it still bring the same results that when we started? And you will realize that asking why frequently will actually help us to become more impactful, more focused, and to produce more relevant programs rather than just doing what and how. You know, for too long we do what and how. So training ourselves to have this intention, we always ask, why? Why am I doing this? Why are we doing this, guys? And so that is an important, very important, significant, important area. And so that is some... Uh, areas of actions and intention. I know we want to.